position by position red shirt predictions for um, for Clemson. As you know, spring ball's over with. It's kind of the summertime now. It's crazy to think that it's the summertime now. But fall camp's coming up pretty soon, and the games are coming up pretty soon. Less than, I think, what, less than 90 days now? Was it like eight, less than 85 days? I don't know. It's, it's not very long. It's already the mi- middle of, really the middle of June, so not very long. Um, but let's get into the freshman red shirt predictions. And, um, you know, the, I'll give my disclaimer. These are all our opinions, as you know. We're not we're not some you know experts. We're not there in the meetings with the coaches, but we're just looking at the roster and looking to see if they can contribute realistically now. But we don't know if they've been told that hey, they're not going to redshirt. We don't know if that was part of their recruiting effort is to say hey, we're not going to redshirt you because you know that is a recruiting pitch to tell players hey, we're not going to redshirt you even though we have you know a large amount of players. Um, there's been players that didn't play a lot that never got redshirted, which kind of scratches your head, but I think it goes back to the recruiting aspect of it. But let's start with quarterbacks, all right? And we'll just kind of run down the list. I'm going to go with uh, Tyson uh, Pumachan. Mm-hmm. And I had him, oh, the way we evaluate it is high, medium, low, all right? So high meaning that they are going to probably redshirt. Medium means we don't really know. It just depends on how they do. They they obviously now get four games of kind of dis, to display their skill. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, and then low meaning with the roster, they're just going to have to be freaking awesome to avoid a redshirt because of how the roster is set up. So um, I'm going to say, or no, excuse me, low is that they're, they're, they're not going to get redshirted. Sorry, I said it back, uh, backwards. Go. Low means they're not going to get redshirted. So high means they are going to get redshirted. So uh, Tyson, I'm going to say I'm going to say high. All right, and I know not everybody's going to agree with me. Not everybody's yep. going to agree with me. But you got Chase Bryce. We know he's a four-star guy. He's you know obviously more than capable. And you got Trevor Lawrence is great there. I just don't really see. I mean, he he looked good in the spring game, but I feel like he's the type of guy that would would do good as a redshirt, but. I also understand that uh, you know if he if he does redshirt, then it's kind of hard to say if he'll ever get a chance because then you have DJ right behind him. <laughs> That's very true. I put him on medium uh, just because you know we have two. You like to have three quarterbacks that you can go win with for sure. I mean, they're gonna you're gonna hear people talk about Ben Batson. I know you're gonna hear Davos when you talk about Ben Batson, but I really like what I saw from Tyson Pumachan out of, out of the spring game. Uh, he can really spin the ball for sure. So I put him on medium. But uh, I, I wouldn't mind if he it was one of those guys that got the four games and still got the red shirt. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. I mean, I, I like some of his really, really uh, – he had a lot of zip on some of his passes in the spring game. It was really interesting to see. He did really good rolling out and throwing too. So, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm still on the fence with the guy. I put him high, but I'm still on the fence with the guy. Uh, Rock Jones joined us. My dad, Joey, uh, Jawan. King joined us. He said, check out Frank Ladson in the spring game. Yeah, we know about Frank. That's for sure. Oh, we'll yeah. talk about We'll get to him in a minute. Laura Frederick joined. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Ladson. A lot of people talking about Ladson is a sleeper. So we'll, we'll get to him. Slow down now. Slow down. We'll get to him. <laughs> we'll get to him. Um, but running backs is up next. You got Chez Malusi. I'm going to say Malusi. And yep. then Michael Dukes. I'm thinking that uh, now that Feaster has transferred out, I was going to put that Dukes would probably get – Redshirted, but now I'm going to say that he's kind of uh, on the fence right now because of depth. Uh, and I, I've seen his film; I like what he's got. But then uh, Chez, I believe Chez is not getting redshirted. Okay, so you you have Chez at uh, at uh, at low. Right? Yeah, you said Chez. Yeah, I put I put I put low for Chez. Right. Low low chance of getting redshirted, in my opinion. Yeah, I would probably agree with you on that. I had medium for both in the beginning, but when you you know, you talk about the departure of Tavian Feaster. I think somebody's going to kind of get thrust into action. So I believe that's Chess. <laughs> and um, then we go to wide receivers. Mm-hmm. So this is what we're talking about, guys. We I know you guys want to jump all over these wide receivers real big time. Um, <laughs> Joseph Ngata, Frank Ladson, and then Brandon Spector. Obviously, there's no way Ngata or Ladson is getting redshirted. I don't believe it at all. I'm saying low on that. And then I'm saying a medium for Spectre because of the injury to uh, Rodgers. But, I, you know, to me, he's kind of on borderline high for me. But they, they seem to like him. Like a, lot of, a lot of good reports from him. But definite 
no red shirt for most of the wide receivers on the, the freshman list this year. Yeah, I actually agree with you on all those. Nagata and Lads in the, no chance. They they have to play. Everybody saw what they had in the spring game and what they're going to be able to do for you. Um, even in mop-up duty maybe this year, uh, if, if not starting sometimes uh, in certain situations, I think they're going to be great and they're definitely going to play. Brandon Spector, uh, I actually had listed as high. Uh, we all know how Sweeney likes to use these types of players. Um, so there's definitely a chance he could play. I'm actually still going to hold him as, as a, a high probability of redshirting right now. So we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so you got him as high. I, I like that. Uh, moving on to tight end, we've got Jalen Lay and Davis Allen. You know, my man Ellis Tolbert loves him some Davis Allen. I love Jalen Lay. I saw him at the recruiting wrap-up. Dude is just huge. I'm going to say because of the issues with the suspensions for uh, Galloway, which is so sad to see that, that Dabo is having to spend a ton of time recruiting tight ends when he really didn't want to. Um, he doesn't. He didn't really need to, but now he has to because of all this. And so uh, I'm going low for Jalen and really low for Davis as well. Both of them, I think, are pretty good, solid guys that Clemson's going to need at least for depth. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Simply based off of numbers, I'm going low for both as well. Um, Jalen Lay is obviously a physical specimen. He looks great coming off the bus. And uh, the question is, can he catch the ball? Uh, a lot of people are saying he really needs to work on his hands. So, uh uh, obviously, as a tight end, you're going to have to learn a lot more than just how to catch the ball. He's got to learn the blocking assignments and all that kind of stuff. And that's going to be a real big factor as to, you know, how much they use him and just exactly how they use him during the games. So hopefully he's going to be able to do that. Davis Allen's going to have to be thrust into action as well. So I have low for both, too. You know, Michael Everett's in the chat. He's saying, did Feaster even choose a school? And I don't know if he's choosing a school, chosen a school at, or, at, or not. Um, it's no. between, really, looks like Virginia Tech and South Carolina. Ooh. Right. Ooh, I just hate to say that, but it looks like it's between those two schools. We obviously know that Shaq Smith has already committed uh, under the, you know, already basically working out with Maryland, so we already know that for him. But as far as uh, Tavian Feaster, we don't know yet. Barry Teague just joined us. Welcome to the show, Barry. Let us know uh, what you think about the red shirts uh, freshman for the 2019 season. That's what we're going over right now. Next up is offensive linemen. What do you think for offensive linemen? <laughs> offensive linemen we have Hunter Rayburn Caleb Boating and uh, William Putnam uh, I actually have high for for Rayburn and Boating and then I have uh, medium for Putnam Putnam is obviously the most ready made right now uh, to come in and compete Clemson is pretty set on the offensive line right now uh, Putnam would be in this kind of a depth guy and obviously for the future um, so I think there's a, a decent chance he gets in but hopefully we don't need him this year but as far as the other two it's pretty rare uh, that a freshman offensive lineman comes in and makes a difference unless you're Mitch Hyatt uh, so hopefully uh, we can we can kind of keep them on the red shirt. Yeah, I agree as well. I mean, I don't see many of them get, not getting red shirted. That's not how Clemson really works. It's kind of like the linebackers. You know, Brent Venables is big on red shirting most of his linebackers unless they're just studs. Right. Same thing with the offensive linemen. They don't really like to let any of them play freshmen except for, like you said, Mitch Hyatt. I'm going high for all of them except for Putnam as well. There is a possibility that a backup guard position could come open and Putnam would fit right into that really early on. So um, that's what I'm going to say for the offensive line. What about defensive line? Defensive line. Okay, I was going to give you a choice. Obviously, I can see it's 934, so I was going to give you a choice as to whether you wanted to save the defense. But if you think we can knock it out, we'll knock it out. Um, we doing it. Defensive line, we've got Taquan Johnson, Etinosa Rubin, Tyler Davis, Logan Cash and Rook Oro Oro. Um, Taquan Johnson, uh, Cash, Oro Oro, I have his high. I think they uh, need some time to develop a lot of real raw prospects there. Um, Logan Cash, I think we have him actually at defensive end right now. Um, and a lot of people think he's eventually going to either be a defensive tackle or he's going to be an offensive guard. Um, so we'll see how, how that works out. But I think all of those are going to redshirt. Uh, Etinosa Rubin, I put as a medium just because uh, you know, for depth issues, obviously we've we've got some people we got to replace there, so we got to count on somebody. Tyler Davis, no way that guy's redshirting. He looked too good in the spring game. He's looked too good in practice. He's going to play this year, and if he's <laughs> he may, he may start. I don't think he will. Uh, he may start later in the season, but this guy's good. He's going to play, so he's definitely low on my radar for redshirts. 
I like it. I agree with all of those. You know, Jason just brought in that uh, gave us an update on the Braves. So we're missing the Braves and the Pirates right now. Braves are up six to five. Looks like Acuna Jr. is doing some big stuff there. Man, their bats are coming alive right now. But you know, the big time games are coming this weekend against the Phillies. That's what I'm really looking for, Jason. Let us know, Jason, what you think. Will the Braves be able to take over first place in the East this weekend playing the Phillies? Let me know. I want to know what you think. Um, going into the linebackers real quick, we've got Brighton Constantin. Uh, obviously, he's hurt. I don't believe that he's going to make it past, so I believe that he will get some type of red shirt there. Keith McGuire, Vonta Bentley, Greg Williams, Kane Patterson. I actually love Kane Patterson's film. Dude is an awesome running back for his high school and a really good linebacker for his high school, but all these guys are really good too. Bunch of really high-rated prospects. Um, and before Shaq Smith left, I had them all as a high. Um, I'm going to say that maybe one of them, a lot of people are saying Keith McGuire. I'd like to see Kane Patterson avoid a red shirt, but it's hard to say, you know, um, Brent Venables is very picky with who he picks, but I believe that even if they do all red shirt, the reason for that would be because Mike Jones Jr. and Jake Venables are the freaking real deal at linebacker. Yeah, absolutely. I have most of them being high as well, except for Keith McGuire and Vontae Bentley. I put his medium because I think there's a chance they can play, obviously, after the departure of Shaq Smith. You know, we lost Trey Lamar, Kendall Joseph. I think there's a chance that somebody, even though it's a linebacker and Brent Minimal system, which is difficult to learn, somebody's going to have to come in and play a little bit, I think. So I think those two are the, the ones that have the best chance of getting in early. I like that. Now, here's something more interesting. I like the the secondary. Okay, so you've got the, the safeties, Joseph Charleston, Landon Zanders, Ray Thornton, and Jalen Phillips. Um, I'm going to go a medium for Charleston. I liked him. He looks pretty good. And then um, a lot of his film looks good. And I'm going to go high for all of them. Landon definitely needs to get in the weight room. Ray and Jalen, I, haven't, I haven't seen much of them. And so yeah. you don't see much of them. That means that they're pretty low on the list. <laughs> I actually agree with everything you said. I have medium, high, high, high as well. Um, you know, Landon Zanders, he likes to hit. He's a little shorter, I think, for a safety, but he, he really likes to hit. Ray Thornton, I think, has good length. He just needs to get in the weight room. Uh, and Jalen Phillips, the same thing. Joseph Charleston is actually filled out a little better, and uh, I think he's going to be the only one of those that will be able to help us this year. And what's interesting, if you move over to the defensive backs, you've got Sheridan Jones, who I believe had an amazing Amazing spring game. Great job. He looks ready for the role, and he showed up as an early enrollee. Unfortunately, the best recruit of all of the defensive backs, five-star guy out of Alabama, did not get to early enroll, so we didn't get to see him. Andrew Booth is coming, and uh, you also have DK as well. Before, Darion Kendrick was on the defensive side of things, and it looks like he's going to permanently be there. You know, they keep saying, oh, he's going to play both sides. I think he's he looked awesome in the spring game as well. Now, he had to go against some top-notch guys, uh, and he did he did get posterized. On a, he got rossed, as you like to say. But, um, you know, he, just because you get rossed doesn't mean he didn't have great position on the dude. He was all, he was all over that guy, and he's a five-star guy. So um, I, I want to see him on the field as much as possible. Um, so I'm saying Sheridan on the fence for me and Andrew Booth, I can't really say right now, to be honest with you, TBD for me because he I didn't get to see him. Yeah, I have medium for both. I mean, Andrew Booth, you know you're getting a, a star player. Obviously, he's a five star for a reason. Uh, Sheridan Jones, I have a hard time, I have a hard time putting, you know, Andrew Booth as playing if I'm not gonna put Sheridan Jones because we've seen Sheridan Jones. Uh, he's a thick kid. He He's physical. He really likes to go get after it, and he did in the spring game, had a good spring game uh, from what I saw anyways. I, I liked his his attitude, his enthusiasm. Uh, I think he's, he's going to play. He's going to be right there with Andrew Booth, so I put medium for both. And then finally, to wrap it up, we got a couple people joined in, Rick Murtaugh and Lisa Hoffman and Dakota Jordan. Welcome to the show. We're talking Clemson freshman redshirt predictions. We're almost done. So uh, once you get done with the, once we get done with the live, you can go check the replay afterwards. And later on in the week, we'll have some clips up for you to watch um, for your viewing pleasure, if you will. Uh, but in the special teams, we really only got one guy to talk about, Aiden Swanson. Guy had a monster punt. His first punt was a little shaky. <laughs> First one a little shaky, got me worried, but then he had a monster punt deep in the, uh, the other team's territory. I believe it's low. I've been talking since January. Mm -hmm. 
he if he had played last year, people don't believe me when I say this. If he had played last year, if you look at his stat sheet, he would have been the third best punter in the nation in college football with his stats. Now, the reason why that's so important is because punting you're not you're not going up against anybody one on one. So if you've got the talent as a senior, it should carry over again in in your freshman year. In college, you would believe, right? It's not like there's going to be somebody all of a sudden guarding him in college. He's still got to punt it just like he's always punted it, right? He's going to have an even yep. better team to block for him. So I'm saying that Will Spires is going to see a lot of the games these year, this year because Aiden Swanson is going to be dominating in the punting game. Going to be a, a welcome change to the special teams that I've picked on for, gosh, five years. Yeah, I certainly hope you're right. I, as a matter of fact, you're so right. I don't even have anything to add because I have, have him low as well. And the, the first punt scared me in the spring game. But uh, other than that, you know, he boomed that that one that, you know, had everybody oohing and on. So and remembering the Bradley Pinion type days. So uh, I have him for low as well.